So let's do another example. We have twenty-five thousand dollars. I'm gonna um, this annuity. The payments are twenty-five thousand dollars for eight years, and this time it's at six percent instead of twelve percent. So again, years zero through eight. In this case, it's twenty-five thousand dollars. So twenty-five thousand. How much is this in in nominal terms? And uh, you'll f physically be receiving two hundred thousand dollars. Twenty-five thousand times eight, right? And our question is, is, well, what would you really be willing to pay for that today? So we need to calculate these present value interest factors for each year. And again, this is just the first term is 1 divided by 1.06 to the first. And then we just increase our exponent for each subsequent year. Finally, we multiply the payment by its corresponding present value interest factor and we get our present value, our discounted values today. So um, then you add these all up and you can see that the $200,000 of actual payments really is only worth $155,225 today. So I'd be willing to pay, I, you can pay me $155,000 today, or you can pay me the $25,000 spread out evenly over the next eight years, given this 6% interest rate. I'm equally happy with both. So just a, a quick comparison here. You can see with the interest rate, um, when you take a look at this, note that the interest rate is, it greatly affects the future um, the, the present value of future payments. So the, the bigger the interest rate, the less value we actually feel we're receiving today. One more example, and this one I'll do, I'll just reveal it all at once here after I set it up. So it's 12,000, uh, so we'll be receiving $12,000 for five years with an interest rate of 11%. And when you set this one up, it's worth $44,352 today. So 12,000 five times is $60,000 of, of payments you'll be receiving. And that's really, and spread out over five years, but it's really only worth $44,352 today. So you can already see how things like pensions and winning the lottery or life insurance um, are driven by this kind of math and these concepts, and, and they are. Um, annuities are factored very heavily and used very heavily in those fields. And in your own personal finance, when you have to calculate for your retirement or for life insurance or payments on a house, things like that, you want to use this concept. And think in terms of what are what is the stream of payments worth today so let me just show this is a, an excel method and an excel is actually it's great you can really see what's going on um, but you can also do this stuff in there's a there's a there's a algebraic formula that also lets you do this it's quicker but it's not so intuitive but i want to present it here because you'll see it so the formula it's a little ugly but the formula is simply the annual payment times all in brackets 1 divided by i minus 1 divided by i times 1 plus i to the nth. Right? So I'm hoping that this is a little, this thing in Excel is a little bit more intuitive. You can follow each term more easily and see how it contributes to this kind of term. But let's follow the math here. So I'm going to plug in the numbers. In this case, you can stare at it and convince yourself that I've plugged it in correctly. Um, I won't read them. And this gets reduced here. And it continues to get reduced. I want to make a note of this one. So it's $12,000 times. Now our term within the brackets has reduced to 3.6959. So let me just show you what that is. In the previous example, if you add up 
the present value interest factor column, 0 0.901, 0 0.812, 0 0.731, etc. If you add those up, you actually get 3.6959. Right, so that's where how the, these things are linked together. And finally, there's our value, 44,351. I think, uh, all right, we've got 44,352 from Excel, so we've got a bit of a rounding difference, but I could always extend Excel to include more uh, places beyond the decimal point. So these are the identical ways to solve these annuity problems. Um, although the algebra, you know, it's not so in, it's not so obvious. So in Excel, you can also use a formula within Excel. It's got all sorts of handy form handy formulas. So there's one called PV. If you go into Excel and within a cell you type equals PV parentheses you get a formula and the formula requires a rate a number of periods a payment an annual payment and then a couple of optional terms a future value something called a type we won't use those right now so when you plug in these terms the present value 11 percent 5 12,000 you get 44,351. So if you went to Excel and typed this in, you should get 44,351. This is uh, a note you would have to type in, um, the 12,000 should be negative. That's just the way it's done, the convention that it's used, left over from the financial calculators. If you have a financial calculator, it's the exact same setup. So that's the main, those are the main concepts and, and math related to annuities, right? So we went from just a, having a, a two periods, today and next year, and a single payment. Then we extended that and said, well, what if we have, instead of next year, what if we have that single payment in three years, or in five years, or in 25 years? Then we said, well, what if instead of having single payments, we have multiple payments, right? So in every year, we've got something. So now we're going to extend it a little further and say, uh, and go from an annuity to a perpetuity. So a perpetuity is a series of fixed payments spread out evenly over time, but without end. They go on forever. So a perpetuity is simply an annuity without an end to the payment stream. So we'd be getting $12,000 a year forever, right? Sounds like that should be a lot of money if we added it all up. But we'll take a look at that in a second. So an example, uh, $1,000 paid every year forever. So this is the example visually using the, the line chart from earlier in the presentation. Year 1, 1,000. Year 2, 1,000. Year 3, 1,000 year four, year five, we'd be here a long time if I counted it out. Um, you know, dot, dot, dot. It just goes on forever. So you might be saying, well, who is going to agree to make a payment forever? It just, it seems like this makes no, this has no bearing in the real world. I mean, it might look nice mathematically, but who cares? Well, the reality is a company is an example of an entity which they make regular payments to shareholders, or they may make regular payments to shareholders, and there's no specified end date to these payments. Right? Companies, in theory, can last indefinitely. We have no set end date. So we actually see this quite a bit in finance when valuing companies, when trying to understand the finance of companies. This perpetuity concept will come into play heavily. So how do we value a perpetuity? Again, we've got $1,000 coming in forever. Let's say we have an interest rate of 8%, a discount rate of 8%, right? We're taking from the future to the present. I'm going to pay you $1,000 starting next year forever. How much are you willing to pay me today to receive that? Well, wow, boy, you scratch your head and you say, that's a lot of money. I mean, it's infinite, isn't it? I don't have that kind of money. Well, fortunately, it's actually when you factor in the time, it reduces to a specific amount. 
and it's surprisingly small. Um, so here's how it works. So we have 108, right? We divide by 108 to the first, we divide by 108 to the second, we divide by 108 to the third. Okay, hang on a second. Now what do we do? All right. Well, we need a totally different methodology. And I'm going to give you a very simple formula. So, right, so fortunately there's a simple algebraic formula for calculating the present value of all those infinite payments. And it's simply this. The present value is equal to the payments, the annual payments, divided by the interest rate, which is simply in this case $1,000 divided by 8%, which is $12,500. So, in this case, you'd be willing to pay me $12,500 today for me to pay you $1,000 every year forever, given this interest rate of 8%. It sounds, it, it, it may sound a little strange because, boy, you know, I add it up and after 13 years, I've received $13,000. Surely after 25 or 30 years, the time value should be more. It just seems like it should be, but really it's not. In fact, if you I, if you laid this out in Excel and just put together a really long spreadsheet with maybe 100 terms or 200 terms, you'll see that every, the payments in the future really become very, the, their present value is almost nothing. And, you know, at some point, the present value of the $1,000 payment a couple hundred years into the future is basically worth nothing today because of this interest rate. So fortunately, when we're valuing perpetuities, um, we have this, the, the, this equation is fairly straightforward. All right, so some big picture takeaways as we're wrapping up the lecture here. So when we say that the present value of X dollars equals the future value of Y dollars, we are really saying that those two cash amounts are identical. So for example, if we have a future payment in five years of $5,000, assuming a discount rate of 8%, based on the time value of money, the present value is worth $3,405. So in other words, 3405, $3,405 is equal to $5,000 given the above time and interest assumptions, right? I don't care. You can pay me $3,400 now or $5,000 in five years, you know, if we agree to this 8% interest rate. I'm equally happy with either. So, in your own use, so if you expect some payment in the future, be sure to discount it to the present value when you're thinking about its actual value today, right? If somebody says, ah, you know, I'll pay you $3,000 in two years, um, you know, can you give me a loan today? Well, you know, depending on how you factor in the interest rates, well, you know, you, would, you wouldn't want to just give $3,000. You would want to discount it for the appropriate interest rate. And just finally, to wrap up some of the, the big picture takeaways, um, a given amount of money in the future has less value in the present, right? That is the basic concept behind the time value of money. The time value of money, moreover, will let us make numerical equivalencies between the present and future values, right, given an interest rate. So we've developed a number of techniques to value different types of payments, annuities, perpetuities. And just as a summary, the following equations express some of the most important of these concepts mathematically. All right? And I won't read these off, but you can see. So that wraps up this lecture on the time value of money. And I hope this was informative.